Welcome everyone to another episode of Speedrunning SC2, the perfect series for all you cheese lovers. In the last episode, we did a lot of series with Thors and BCs. Today, we're going to do some more crazy stuff. Let's begin. All right, first game of the day is against Merrick, a Grandmaster Protoss. Now, the funny thing is, I think I know his name. I think this is actually a cheeser as well. All right, we got Terran. Now, how do we cheese a Protoss cheeser? with Terran. I feel like usually cheese against cheese is very risky. It's very scary. So I'm trying to think of the perfect cheese in which I can kill him and kind of negate his cheese at the same time. Now we do have six minutes to do it. So let's think about something smart here. Um, if I remember correctly, I, we played against him before and I want to say that he did a proxy robo cheese, but it's kind of hard to tell. Like the, the memories kind of blend together and I'm not quite sure if that's what I expected that he was going to do or if that's what he actually did. Now, I think what I, I'm not going to go for a proxy here because I feel like in proxy versus proxy, it's a little bit scary. Um, mostly for the reason that you don't win those games very fast. Like, I think proxy reaper against a proxy raid is pretty, uh, proxy gate is pretty fine, but you can't really win very fast. You have to transition and that's how you get your lead. So I'm going to go for, um, ooh, that's a very, is that a cat rush? Why is that, huh? Why is that prop so early? Oh, wait, it's because I was random. Okay, I was... Yeah, I kind of forgot because the last two episodes I was playing Terra and now I'm back to playing random. I was like, are we kind of rushed? I mean, maybe we still are, but no, he was probably just checking what race we were. Uh, I'm very interested to see why he didn't just attack my SCV. That's one of the worst things about playing Terran. I always say this and I will keep this opinion. Um, just having your barracks here and your SCV being zapped over and over is so annoying. So I guess I'm very grateful he didn't do it. But I'm also a little bit suspicious, especially because I told you guys he has a reputation as a cheeser already. So is he? did he go to build a gateway? Did he go to build his robo, right? So my plan here is to go for 1-1-1. I want to do a big one base tank push. And very likely he will attack me before um, I have to attack him. So I can defend this attack and then counter and win. Or maybe... Because keep in mind, he might not necessarily know we're speedrunning, right? So maybe he will just attack into me and die and then leave the game. That's also a possibility. Uh, I mean, he can also just kill me, of course. I'm not trying to sound like this game is already won, but... Uh, yeah, there are a few chances to win this game for sure. I'm just going to scout around my base because, you know, I, I want to make sure there's no uh, Robo or anything being built here. Or Stargate, perhaps even scarier. I think my natural looked pretty clear, right? Now, if you were to go for a proxy Robo... Uh, you would not build it that close, I would think. Mostly because you can make a prism. So even if you're going for an immortal, uh, for example, you can also still make a prism and just elevate it over pretty easily. I'm gonna make one heli in here. I'm gonna go for a 2 one, one. I Okay, dude, I knew it. I was actually right. Let's go. The memory serving me well, guys. Let's freaking go. So that is dead. Um, and what am I gonna do about it exactly? Let's see. Uh, there's three minutes left on the clock. Um... I do have enough time to defend. An Immortal is going to pop pretty soon. I can counterattack with these units to give me a good idea of what's coming. The only thing that's a bit unfortunate here is that with all these production facilities, I don't actually have money to make a bunker, which is, you know, usually the first step to defending stuff like this. So that's something that could be of a little concern. I see he has a gateway on the low ground. He does not have an expansion behind that. Um, I mean, if he does, that would be a pretty insane strategy. No, I'm actually, I don't want to sacrifice this Reaper. Let's save it with the grenade. There we go. Um, and the Hellion, can I, it can actually see the natural. That's nice. I don't have to guess. I'm pretty sure the Hellion just sees that natural. I, I, I do think his strategy is pretty cool. Walling it off, by the way, with uh, just the battery. Because this kind of prevents normal scouting. Okay, so there's the Immortal. That is the first Immortal, I believe, if my timing is correct. I made a Viking, which I could fly across the map. But it might not be the smart thing to do here because he very likely has a battery in the main as well. Unless he's just relying on that Stalker to do all the heavy lifting. Let's see. Now the Viking is also very useful. Yeah, he does have a battery. Okay, the Viking is also very useful against um, the Warp Prism. Okay, he was trying to take his natural, seems like. Now we do still have two minutes. I'm going to get a second tank here. Ideally, you attack with three tanks. This is actually a rule uh, that you guys can remember when you chase Protoss players. It's that... Oh, he's going to go for it maybe? No. Um, since battery overcharge is so potent, the only way you can really deal damage through the battery is by having three tanks. That's kind of the amount where you cut through their HP, their unit's HP, as well as the shield. So you can actually kill units even through a battery overcharge. If you attack with only two tanks, 
a shield battery is going to ruin your your day. So uh, that's why I'm going to wait for three tanks here. It's going to be the perfect timing, I think. Especially because he seems to be transitioning, though that might be uh, a, a wrong assumption on my part. Now let's do a little bit of micro here. Lifting over the tank. This does not look like a lot of units. Okay, there's no expansion, so that was a... Uh, a bold assumption by me he does catch the viking which is a little bit annoying but keep in mind we do have to go for it regardless i do actually this could be a disruptor let's be smarter this could still be a disruptor being built so he does have three more stalkers back at home um do i go for the robo there's an observer here i'm gonna kill that it could technically be dt's right like let's keep in mind this is a cheesy, cheesy protos players what do cheesy protos players do when their first season is held you go for the T's, right? So I'm going to make a tech lab here. Just to go for a Raven. And uh, I'm going to try to... Okay, I need to be very careful. A good snipe by him on that one tank. Yeah, I wish I still had that Viking alive to combat the Prism. Because I can't really do a lot of damage here. There's another Observer here, so... Yeah, he's doing a good job microing, which is uh, annoying me a little bit, to be honest. I wish he was doing a slightly worse show at that. Now, six minutes is about being approached, which is the timing of my SCV pool to conclude my macro, basically. So let's grab all the boys here. I don't think he can have a disruptor. Mostly for the reason that... Oh, that's a really good snipe as well. Mostly for the reason that I killed the robo and I saw a bunch of observers. Now he has the prism. <gasps> Miss micro on the prism. Oh my goodness, that was close. Now this is the final attack. I don't have money left. I guess I should also... I didn't really think about it before. I should also not be dropping any meals, right? To really uh, embrace the challenge, I want to say. Now, without robo units, I'm not quite sure how he's going to defend this. He has a shield buddy overcharge, but I have the magic 3 tank count. There we go. And no GG has been called. And the 1-1-1, or rather well, the 2 one has done it against the proxy robo cheeser. And this is one of those games where I just win because of the memory I have. I remembered his build. I remembered he was a cheeser. I remembered even which cheese he did. I scouted for it. I found it. And my build that I did to counter it worked perfectly against another Protoss. If he was a barcode, I might have done something different. But in this case, it helped me out a lot. Let's go for game number two. All right. We got a barcode Terran on Ancient Sister. Now, let's see what race we get. I'm trying to think. Is there a race on which I would tell him? I guess if I was Zerg, I would tell him what my race is. All right. We got Protoss. Cool, cool, cool. Here we go. He's riding good luck have fun. Which is undoubtedly going to be followed by him asking my race. That's how it usually goes, right? If I play random. All right. Now, what cheese am I going to do? I feel like I haven't done my uh, old PVT cheese that I did at the start of the series. Or the start of the second season of this series, I should say. Which was the very weird, like, proxy 5 gate after expanding build. I didn't really like that, though. I did totally vibe with that. So, I think I'll just go for that. Uh, see if it still works. I do need to get my cheeses a little bit more in order with protoss because i think on this map it might not be that great to do but i just vibe with it so much that i'm gonna do it you know but ideally i get to a point where i have my cheeses for the specific maps and figure out which ones are best on which maps now that you know does mean i also have to learn the new maps a little bit better which is probably gonna take me a few weeks to be fair okay he's SCV scouting me very early um, which is unusual, but he just wants to see what my race is. He might go for an engineering bay block, actually. So I'm just going to send the probe down to uh, prevent that just in case. Let's see, it doesn't seem like he's going to go for it yet. Okay, he's trying to delay the natural. I mean, this is perfectly fine for me because uh, if you look at my minerals, I can't even make it yet. So that is actually totally fine. And I'm going to be able to annoy his SCV making the barracks, which is, you know, that's a very annoying thing to do. I said it before, but for me, it's pretty nice that I'm the one on this side now. Oh, can we? Oh, that, could, that would have been sick if we got that. Okay, I'm going to go for my 20 core. And then when do I stop making SCV? Oh, he's not paying attention. Oh, that was really close. Okay. And now I'm just going to dip. I need a pylon here. Pretty much as a fake. Uh, this is going to be a fake pylon. And then after this... Oh, he went for a marine. Okay. Uh, that marine actually finished a little bit faster than I expected. So it might be time for me to cut making uh, workers already. And go for this massive proxy gate. If you Chronobus Warp Gate, how long does it take to finish? I would think it's about a minute or so. Uh, so I'm just gonna... Where, where can I put a lot of gateways? Probably here is a good place to put it, right? We're gonna go for here. We're gonna chrono boost one adept. Just to make it seem normal. And I'm definitely gonna make a few probes because... Well, actually, do I have to? I was gonna say I'm making a few probes. Because his reaper is gonna scout me. But he didn't actually make a reaper. Maybe I can make probes only? On my natural base. So if he would somehow see it... It looks pretty normal. That seems like a decent strategic choice there. 
Let's go just make probes from that base. And then how many probes do we have? We have 23 probes. I believe you can afford five gateways from that. Uh, keep in mind, I'm only mining from one gas, right? So uh, this seems about reasonable. Now my, I, I did proxy this pretty far. Maybe I should be a little bit more brave with my proxies, to be honest. Because this feels like it's a little bit too far away. Um, I could make a sentry as well, actually. Do I have another chrono boost? Almost. Oh, I didn't actually mean to finish that, but that's okay. He has a bunker. Mm, which doesn't really tell me that much. It does tell me he's afraid. If you look at the bunker placement, he was afraid of me sending my adepts into his mineral line, which could be a sign of something. I don't know what it is, but it could be a sign of something. I'm going to get a pylon a little bit closer, just so it's easier to warp in during battle. Obviously, I can warp in here too, and it's a fast warp in with the warp gates, but at the same time, it is a little bit far away. I might not want to look there during the battle pretty much. Now, I could go for a first big warp in of Adepts and just try to shade in past just to get like a really good start here. Okay, eight Adepts. That's actually a lot of Adepts for a first timing. It's not even four minutes and I'm going to be able to hit him with four Adepts. It seems like a pretty disgusting timing. Now, I might have to make a Robo or Batteries at home. Let's see. We are four minutes into the game. We still have a little bit of time here. Okay, and then we're going to go for it instantly. I'm going to warp some Stalkers now. Let's see where these adepts are gonna go. Should we go into here? No, we're just gonna go for this. That looked like a lot of marines. This could be this could be a three racks potentially. Let's get a few more units out here. Okay. You can see he's set on over. Oh, are you sure about that? Okay, I was gonna say. And now we're just gonna kill this bunker over here. That's gonna be pretty nice for us. There we go. He's trying to repair it, which is probably the right choice. But uh, obviously, we are going to be able to kill all of his SCVs for that, which is nice. Doesn't have that many Marines here either. Oh, did he make a mistake? Oh, there we go. A massive mistake here. We're going to get on top of his units there. And these Marines are really going to struggle. He let my Stalkers in as well. Another blunder. Stalkers do extra damage against Armored, which means the tank is going to die to these two Stalkers. And that's going to be absolutely massive. He doesn't really have units left at this point. I mean, he obviously has a few. Don't think it's going to be enough. Let's see, we still have five, or it is five minutes on the game, rather. So we still have some time. That is a very bad shade by me. Oh, he does have a Banshee here now. Is it time for me to make another gas, perhaps? Let's see, can we get that with the Zealots? Doesn't look like it. Oh, here's a one Stalker, that is nice. Should probably micro this a little bit. I mean, the thing is, he's waiting for tanks to finish. Because he's losing all of his workers to these adept shooting. But without a tank, oh, that is a missile turret, or an auto turret, rather. Okay, let's try to get another pile on here. I need to keep the time in mind here, right? Okay. Is he not going to save that Banshee? That's a very useful tool for him. He made a Widow Mine instead. That is massive. And now at this point, we have 15 more seconds. But if you look at the situation of the game, it is looking pretty good for us, right? Let's see, my Adepts are doing a really good job. We are finally going to get into the base, which is nice. Let me shade those in. And then... Uh, yeah, he doesn't have Cloak on the Banshee, so I think we're going to be totally fine here. I'm going to pull the workers for good measure because that's what we're supposed to do. Uh, this is one of those situations where he could potentially, uh, you know, just try to not leave the game. In that case, obviously, we would win. But this game is done and dusted. We have done it with the legendary 5-gate build once again. And there we freaking go. He's actually trying to micro this Banshee to the end of the world, basically. But we are going to be able to kill that, I think. There we go. The Banshee is going to go down. The Raven is going to go down. And the 1G is called. And that was another beautiful protocease. This has worked every single time. Besides one game, actually. We did lose one game on Stargazers. And I completely messed it up that one. I do remember that quite clearly. We should have won that game too. But yeah, this build has actually just looked pretty strong. It's such a random build. No one expects it. Who the hell was going to scout for proxy four gateways, you know, freaking three minutes into the game? Because the attack hit before four minutes. That's actually insane with eight adepts. Even if you play three racks, you might not have enough marines for that. But that's incredible. Game two in the books. Let's go for game number three. All right, game number three is against another Grandmaster Terran 5.6k called Paxters. Now, let's see. We're playing on Royal Blood. What race am I going to get? We are Zerg. Oh, <laughs> Okay, let me tell you what race I am. I was just gonna I was just gonna say it, but then he actually asked because I am gonna go for my absolutely devastating proxy edge here because I freaking love doing that against Terran. Uh, the, the thing is here, you know, if I'm doing my proxy edge with gem series, uh, which just ended by the way, of course, but 
in that case, you have multiple proxy hatches to do, but here I have to end the game in six minutes, right? So I do kind of have to go for this here. I would also like to learn some more Rocha lins, but in my opinion, proxy hatch is always going to be the most epic Zerg cheese. So that's what I'm going to go for. Now, hopefully he trusts me despite my name and doesn't decide to scout too early because that's the thing, right? Terran scouts Zerg very late. And if he trusts me, he would actually scout me pretty late, which is fantastic. Ooh! Okay, then we're walling on the low ground. Oh, wait, we had this situation before. I think I'm just going to make the hatchery out here. Now, this is, a, this is a thing, guys, because I could switch my strategy here. I, I remember the longest game we played. I think this was in the Proxy Hatch series. We played a 35-minute game against the Terran. And it started like this, where there was like a wall off on the low ground, and I decided to make the hatchery here instead. And then... I kind of got the natural, but I wasn't able to kill because I couldn't get my spines all the way from here over there in time. And then it, it became pretty awkward, I guess is the least thing you can say. Now, I might have to go for roaches here. I'm really doubting myself at this point. I would love to... I have to go for spines. Uh, I decided to do it. I was really close to making that gas. And mostly because I feel like... It is too late to go for roaches. Normally, if you go for roaches, you make everything at like 14 supply very fast. This was a 17 hatch, so I'm not going to be able to, um, yeah, get roaches up fast enough, I think. But we're going to see. I don't think he has scouted yet. Or, well, uh, most likely he has, I think, and just went back with the SCV. That seems pretty logical. Now, let's just spam Zerglings and, uh, and see how this one goes. I'm going to make speed. I think I'm actually going to make a queen first here. Mostly for the reason... Um, that I need to get creep all the way there. You see, he's already making a bunker all the way up there. Yeah, this is going to be a very tough one, to be honest, guys. Th uh, this, this overlord cannot die. I, do I think it's going to survive. I'm pretty sure it's going to survive. That would have been... It's already pretty bad anyway, to be fair. So I have enough Zerglings. I'm going to kill his depot, but this is exactly the struggle I was talking about. He's going to go for the overlord. That is a badass move, I have to admit. He's going to get the overlord, and it's going to be worth it. Okay, I'll shout out to him. That's actually badass. That's, uh, you know, it's pretty brave. That could have just died to, like, two Zerglings, but it was a very badass move, and it paid off for him totally. So well done to him. Now, maybe I can already get pretty close here. I'm going to make another overlord. That, that bunker is finished. We need to keep that in mind. So let's get the spines a little bit closer. I still think we have opportunities here. Keep in mind, we are going to have uh, speed links as well at some point. He's making a wall. And I have my two overlords here. With my next script tumor, I might already be able to attack the wall. Let's see. Okay, it's getting closer and closer. Can I hit him from here? It's getting really close. I might be able to hit him already, actually. Let's see. Keep in mind, I have an absolute, you know, crap ton of Zerglings here. So, can I hit the wall? Yeah, that is perfect. Okay, we can hit the wall. Yeah, the problem here is he's making a unit from that factory already. Yeah, it's already finished, in fact. That is the biggest problem here. But let's try to get those out of the way. I'm going to burrow the spine a little bit closer. Wait, is that actually a wall? I'm not 100% convinced. Oh, it is a wall. Oh, no. Yeah, guys, I think this is just going to be it because I'm not allowed to transition from this, remember? Oh, I can't even reset SCV. Yeah, I mean, there's not much else we can do. I can try to desperately get a lair up and go for a Nidus. I think that's probably the only thing I could do here. But besides that, we are absolutely done and dusted. Oh, he opened the wall. That is beautiful. We're going to get on top of the, the Marines and the tank. What has he just done? No freaking way, guys. How has he done that? That is absolute insanity what he just did. The game was 100% won in his favor, I want to say. But now we are most likely still going to be able to do it. Here and there we go. Why did he do that, guys? Absolute insanity. He had this game on lock 100%. Let me show you guys here. What am I supposed to do? I have 14 drones against 23. I have one red HP spine crawler. It's a full wall. He goes out with the marines. Doesn't close the depot. Loses all of the marines besides one. Loses the tank just before the liberator is out. Bunker goes down and every SCV goes down. And speedrunning SC2. I've been telling you guys all the time, this series is just blessed. Miracle after miracle. How do we keep winning? We are over 6.1k MMR with our random speedrunning account. And I think we're going to leave it at that. A perfect episode in another way than usual. We won a game with every race. I think we beat... I don't know who we beat. Two Terrans and one Protoss, I think it was. I'm not 100% sure anymore. But anyway, fantastic episode. If you guys enjoyed it, make sure to like and subscribe to the channel. And I'll see you all for the next one. Adios.